This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. In this video, we're going to be continuing on with our treatment of the TensorFlow module in Python. And just to kind of refresh what we've done so far is we're trying to build a neural network that is going to quantify whether or not a given movie review has positive or negative sentiment. So we're training a neural network based on IMDb data, and it's supposed to give us a zero or a one to indicate whether or not the movie has a negative review for zero or positive for one. And what we did in the last video is we specified using the Keras module from TensorFlow, we created a model object from that, and then we actually constructed the layers that will constitute our neural network. So these are the four layers, input layer is the embedding layer, two hidden layers that we have here, and then the final output layer, which is going to be responsible for outputting either a zero or a one to indicate whether or not the movie review had negative sentiment or positive sentiment. And then what we did at the end there is we just used the built-in summary method for the model object, which just spits out kind of a bird's eye view of what the model is actually doing and what the layers constitute. So that's what we did. We still are not quite done with building this model. We need to actually tell the model how well it's doing. And the way that we can actually give some sense to the model to how well it's doing is by specifying a loss function and an optimizer to train it. So since we're dealing with a binary classification problem, that is a problem that's either going to spit out a zero or a one, it's a binary outcome, we need to figure out a loss function that's going to be good at quantifying uh, the, this type of problem. And the loss function that we're going to be using is the binary cross entropy loss function. Uh, if you've done like regression problems or other neural networks, you're probably familiar with other types of loss function that will kind of tell you the distance between two objects to let you know how good your model is doing to train it. Uh, you might be familiar with mean squared error, which is a very popular distance metric that's used very frequently in regression. Uh, but again, since we're dealing with a binary classification, the binary cross entropy makes a lot of sense here. More to the point, binary cross entropy is also very good with dealing with probabilities and measures the distance between probability distributions. And it's kind of what we want to uh, do within our model. So how do we tell TensorFlow uh, that we want to specify our model in this way to build the uh, loss function and optimizer into our model? So I'm just going to comment the summary out here and I'm going to say model dot compile. And the compile function takes a number of arguments. One of them is the optimizer. So we can specify the optimizer to use. In this case, I'm just going to use kind of a standard one, which is called the atom optimizer. The other thing that we want to specify is the loss function, which we can specify by the parameter loss. And it's going to be, in this case, the binary underscore cross entropy, again, for the reasons that we stated before. And then we also want to specify the metrics that we're interested in <clears throat> training our model with respect to, one of them is accuracy. So what we can do is we can set metrics, which is another argument for the compile function. It takes a list, and the one metric that we want to care about here is the accuracy. And that's all we really need to do. We've kind of got our end-to-end uh, -end neural network here, which is constructed, we've built the layers, we've built the loss function into it, and that's kind of what we have. So now that we've done that, we want to figure out how well does our neural network actually perform on the data that we give it? And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create a validation set of data. So in training, we want to kind of check the accuracy of the model on data it has not seen before. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create a validation set of data. And the way that we're going to do that is by setting apart 10,000 examples from the original training data. And you might be asking yourself, why not just using the testing data? And again, the goal is to develop the model specifically just with the training data and then only use the test data just to evaluate how accurate the model is. And that just makes a lot more sense from, um, you know, kind of making sure that you don't overfit for one. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify a variable called x underscore val. This is going to be equal to the, the initial 10,000 entries of training data. So we'll say this is equal to trained data. Uh, and then we'll say from the start of the list all the way up to 10,000. We'll also store in the uh, partial training data, namely the remaining from 10,000 on uh, to the remaining part of the data set. So I'll say partial x train is equal to train data of 10,000 all the way to the end. So what we're doing is we're kind of splitting it down the middle. First 10,000 are in xval, the remaining 10,000 and uh, all the way to the end of the list are in partial x train. And we're going to do the same thing for the labels as well. So we'll say y train is equal to uh, training labels. <clears throat> so we'll do labels here. And then we'll also do the same thing with the partial. So we'll say partial y train is equal to train labels 10,000 all the way to the end of the list. So we've got both our, uh, we've got our validation sets 
uh, figured out here. The next thing that we want to do is we actually want to train the model itself. And we can show how to do that in TensorFlow. And we're going to specify a couple of optional arguments here for the model to train it, namely things like epochs, batch sizes. We're going to train for 40 epochs and uh, some mini batch sizes of 512 samples. These are optional parameters that are probably beyond the scope of explaining in this video, but they are numbers that uh, essentially are extra parameters for building a neural network. And if you have the code here, you can definitely tweak those numbers to see how much better or worse your model performs. Um, but if you want more context on that, you can either check the documentation for um, what I'm about to write here, or you can look a little bit more into the literature on neural networks to kind of get more of a sense of what these things are actually uh, doing in the model itself. So I'm going to define a variable called history, and I'll set that equal to model.fit. Now fit thing, the fit function takes a few optional uh, arguments. One of them is partial x train, which is again part of our validation set. We also want to do the partial y train. These are the, val the um, remaining 10,000 plus labels that we have. We're going to specify how many epochs we want to train for. So in this case, we're going to do 40 epochs. And then we're also going to specify a batch size of 512. Again, you can look more into what each of those parameters uh, actually mean for more context, a little bit beyond the scope of this video. The other thing that we want to do is actually give it the validation set. The validation set are the initial 10,000 uh, training data and, and uh, training labels. So we're going to feed that into the validation data, which is equal to a tuple, which is xval comma yval. And then finally, what we're going to do is we specify another argument, which is verbose. And this is just going to uh, allow the model to actually spit out more information so we can actually see what it's doing as it's training. Uh, so you can set that equal to zero or one to indicate whether or not you want to see what happens or whether or not you just want it to be quiet and not spit out any output. That we've got this set up. Let's go ahead and clear the terminal. So we'll say clear, and then we'll go ahead and say Python imdb.py. This is actually going to run the entire script, so we should see a lot of output from before. This is going to train our model after we see some of the output from previous videos and the integers representing the previous uh, data sets. Now what we see is the output of the model being trained for every single epoch. And we can see a few things here, loss being one of them. That is the number that we want to get smaller progressively. That's kind of the loss function. And then accuracy, which is how accurate our model is at predicting the outcome. And it's just hit 40 epochs, so that is what we trained for. And we can see that the loss function is low, which is what we want. It's below 0 0.1 and the accuracy function is high, so it's almost 98%. So this is good because it's telling us that on the validation set, the model is trained and is performing quite well. Now, what we want to do, our true test of whether or not this is a good model, is to try to run this model on the test data, so the data set that we've actually uh, obscured from everything. And we'll see, unfortunately, that the number here is not as good. With some tweaking to the model, we can do quite a bit better We'll probably leave that for another series of videos because uh, sort of tweaking models and making them um, you know, progressively better in this kind of diminishing returns way uh, is, is kind of a science and an art. Um, and, and there's a lot of moving parts and things that are well beyond the scope of this series, but are definitely interesting and things that, uh, you know, again, kind of more of an art than a science in, in the way that you approach this. So let's go ahead and try to see what we get actually trying to run the model on the test data that we set aside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this for now, and I'm going to run the uh, result essentially the evaluate function, which is built into any model object. So I'm going to say results is equal to model dot evaluate. And then what I want to give it here is the data to evaluate on. So I'm going to give it the test data and also the test labels. So again, these are the uh, labels and data sets that we've actually been uh, obscuring from the model itself. And then after we've trained this, uh, after we've evaluated the accuracy of the model on the test data, Let's print out results, which is the end result of how accurate this actually is. So we'll write that, we'll clear the terminal so we don't get too much output, uh, and then we'll run it again. So we'll say Python IMDB. So again, we should see some extra output just because the Python script obviously is going to run in a linear fashion from top to bottom. So we'll see some of the previous stuff from before. And then at the end here, we see the final result. And it's not very encouraging. We have a pretty high loss function. So it's over, it's nearly 70%. And then an accuracy function of, of, of about half. So it's no better than a coin flip, which is a little bit disheartening. Um, however, one of the things that I think is a positive takeaway is how easy it is to construct a neural network. And while this isn't really um, kind of resounding 
this isn't like a very positive win in terms of how well it's performed in the test data. One of the things that is good is that we can tweak this in a way that should give us a uh, higher accuracy. So this is kind of a naive approach when it comes down to it. We've constructed the neural network. It's not, I'm not taking away from how sophisticated this is just because there's only a few lines of code here. It's a very sophisticated process. We've constructed essentially an entire neural network in these lines that are highlighted here. Um, so there's a lot of very complicated things going on. However, the method by which we're constructing this is not particularly sophisticated. It's quite naive. We could probably bump up the accuracy on this model to quite a bit higher uh, by doing a few different tricks. And again, those tricks are probably going to be elaborated on in another series of videos. I intend to continue the focus on TensorFlow and more or less machine learning on this channel. And I hope that you have enjoyed this series. Again, the real point of this series is to kind of uh, give you a very quick example of TensorFlow, of neural networks, and an application of both of those things. Um, and of course, the more uh, in depth you go, the better you can leverage those tools. So we should see those in subsequent videos. Thanks again for watching. Code is available on my GitHub. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next series of videos.